Okay, welcome everyone to our first virtual lecture. This lecture, we are going to be going over Finale and how exactly we can utilize this program to create beautiful looking scores. Okay, so if you go onto Canvas and under Modules at the very bottom, you will find a module that says Finale Packet. Go ahead and download this packet and it will have all of the projects that you will complete for the Finale assignment and a very helpful shortcut layout on the very first page for using speedy entry. Okay, now that you have that downloaded, go ahead and look at the first piece within this packet. It's called My First Piece, and we are going to go through how to create this within Finale. So you'll notice I already have Finale open, and this is what Finale opens up with every time. Here we can go ahead and open an existing file. We can import a music XML file. We can go through their setup wizard. This is very helpful if you're working with larger ensembles or more unique instrumentation. It also does a lot of the legwork for us at the very beginning to get us right into the music writing and not have to worry too much about the logistics of the way it looks. Now down below setup wizard, we have the default document. We're going to go ahead and start with this today because it actually uh, is a great way to start learning how to utilize Finale's tools. So we're going to go ahead and click on default document. This will load in a blank staff with uh, treble clef on it, and it's only in treble clef actually. Okay, now that we have the blank page open, there are first things we need to do in order to get started. First thing we want to do is input all of the text that we need. It just gets it out of the way, and it's really easy to do. So there are two ways you can input text in a score. You can either double click in these shadow boxes that are created. And uh, if you double click, you'll notice that it gives me the option to edit that text. And I have also, by doing that, it selected the text tool for me. Now, if I didn't have these shadow boxes here or I wanted to input text elsewhere in the score, what I can do is I can go up here to the toolbar on the top and go ahead and select the text tool and then double click and it'll insert some text for me. So let's go ahead and put this title in, my first piece. Okay, just click out of the box and now we have the title. Let's go ahead and put the composer in there. Composer of Christy T. Carr, great. Okay, so now that we have the title and composer, let's go ahead and put in the tempo marking in the very first measure. So. You would think to use the text tool for tempo marking, and that would make sense in a normal case. However, this is Finale, and they decided to put that somewhere else. You can find tempo markings under the expression tool, which is to the left of the text tool, and it is a little mezzo forte symbol. If we click on that, now our cursor has changed to this little down arrow with a line through it. Let's go ahead and double click over the top of the first measure. Now you'll notice in the left window of that box, we have uh, all of the expression tools expression, sorry, the expression objects broken up into different categories. Uh, we got dynamics, tempo marks, tempo alterations, expressive text, technique text, rehearsal marks, and miscellaneous. So we need a tempo mark. Let's go to tempo marks. Now you'll notice that we don't actually have that tempo mark with measurable angst within this dropdown. So we're going to have to create that. So we'll go down here to the bottom and we'll create tempo mark. So with measurable angst. So you just go ahead and type the text, whatever text you want. It could be literally anything you want in this text box and then in space. And now we need to insert a note. Go ahead and insert a quarter note and then equals 72. We have now created that tempo mark. We hit OK and now it shows up under our tempo marks tabs and we'll go ahead and assign that to the first measure. And you'll see we now have the proper tempo mark within the piece. Okay, now that we have all of the text and tempo marks, let's go ahead and put in our time signatures where they need to go. You'll notice in this piece, we have a few time signature changes. So let's start with the first one. We obviously start out in three, four, and that continues on for three measures. So we'll go up to the top toolbar and we'll go ahead and select our time signatures tools, which is to the left of the bass clef and to the right of the two flats, the four, four time signature. Go ahead and click on that. And let's just double click in that first measure. We have now opened up the time signature dialog box. To the right of that box, we have an option 
to change the number of beats. So we can go down to one or all the way up to however many beats you want. Okay. And then below that, we can change the beat duration. So we can go up to dotted, ha dotted quarter notes, half notes, dotted half notes, and whole notes, and all the way down to dotted eighths, eighth notes, dotted sixteenths, and all the way down to 32nd notes. So we just need to stay with quarter notes. So we'll go ahead and go back there. And we need to have uh, three quarter notes in a measure. So we'll change that to three, four. And we'll go over here to the measure region that we're going to assign this through. And let's just leave it with measure one to the next time change. Hit OK. And we have now to change the time signature. So now we know in measure four, we have to change to six, eight. So let's go ahead and go to measure four, double click, open up the time signature dialog box. And now we need to change it to six, eight. Now you might be tempted to go up here to the number of beats slider and go all the way out to six and change the duration down to eight. And technically, yes, that would create a six, eight measure. However, that would not create the proper beaming for six, eight. If you think about the meter of six, eight, six, eight is most commonly broken up into two beats of dotted quarter notes. So that is how we're going to assign it here. We're going to go down number of beats down to two. And then instead of assigning it as eighth notes, we're going to assign it as dotted quarter notes. And now you'll see we have dotted quarter notes. It's six, eight. And now Finale will automatically beam the eighth notes into groups of threes for us. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And we have six, eight now. Now exactly two measures after that, we have to move to four, four. So let's go ahead and double click again. And let's go ahead and change the number of beats up to four and the beat duration down to quarter notes. Same deal, hit OK, we are in 4-4. Four, four. And then two measures later, in the final measure, we change back to 3-4. So we'll just go back here, change the number of beats to 3, and hit OK. We have now inserted all of our time signatures. Now, let's get to the, let's get to the key signatures. So you'll see we start the piece with one flat in F major or D minor. Let's go ahead and put it, put that in. So to the left of the time signature tool, you will see two flats. That is our key signature tool. We go ahead and select on that and double click in this first measure. It'll open up our key signature dialog box. Now, you'll see here we've got a window with a treble clef and the key name C major. And if we go up, it adds a sharp moving through the circle of fifths all the way up to C sharp major. And if we go down, it takes away a sharp or adds a flat all the way down to C flat major, okay? Now you can change the mode of the key as you wish. You can go major, minor, or even keyless and also non-standard if you wanted to. For now, we're just gonna keep it in major. It doesn't really matter if you do D minor or F major for this piece. So I'm just gonna keep it in major, go down one to F major, and we have a single flat of F major. Go ahead and hit okay. And we have that single flat within the piece. Now we need to go in to the measure right before our six eight measure and insert uh, another key change where we are now going to add one sharp to the key signature of G major. Hit OK, we have that key change in. Now let's go down to the 4-4 four, four measure. We're changing keys again, double click. We now have three flats in the key signature. So let's go back down until we have three flats. We have three flats, E flat major. Let's go ahead and insert that and we have the proper key signature. All right, so with all the key signatures and time signatures inserted, let's go ahead and start putting in the music. Okay, so music. There are two ways we can insert notes within Finale. We can use either simple entry, which is up here with the basic eighth note, or speedy entry with the tilted eighth note and the fast lines next to it. So simple entry allows you to simply just click notes into the score with your mouse. And then speedy entry allows you to actually play notes in with a MIDI keyboard while selecting the proper beat duration with your QWERTY keyboard. And you'll notice back on the first page of that finale packet, we do have a speedy entry keyboard shortcut command. This is very helpful, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of work in finale to get used to speedy entry and how it works. It will save you time in the long run. I am not going to be using that today because I don't have a MIDI keyboard hooked up to my computer right now. So let's go ahead and go to simple entry. You'll notice that my mouse cursor is now changed to an eighth note. And we have on the left, all of the note options that we could desire. We've got our whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th, 32nd, 64th, 128th. We've got a dot, we've got a sharp, flat, natural, 
up a half step, down a half step, a tie, a triplet, and a grace note. All right, so now in order to input notes, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I have my eighth note selected because that's what the piece starts with. And let's go ahead and just start clicking the notes in one by one. So we go down here, first note is a B, so I just go ahead and click B. Then I can go ahead and click E, F, G. And you'll notice the next note is actually a flat. So we need to go over here, select our flat tool, and go ahead and select A flat. Now we need to get rid of the flat for the next note because it's just a normal G. So let's go ahead and select the flat one more time. That'll get rid of it on our simple entry tool and then click G in there. We now have a full measure in, inserted. Let's go along and insert the rest of the notes for these two measures. F, D, E, C sharp. So we need to select a sharp, C sharp, and then right back to regular D. So we'll deselect that sharp. D, and we're going to D sharp. So we'll go ahead and click the sharp again and go there. Okay, we now have two measures inserted. Let's go ahead and continue on into the next measure. Now, the next measure does get kind of fun, but we're just going to continue on. And the way we're going to do this approach this next measure is we are going to only put in the notes of the stem up notes with the notes with the stems up. You'll notice that we have two voices there. So we're going to go ahead and do only the notes with the stems going up. So E, G, F sharp A G A. Okay, so we have this measure completed. We have the first three measures completed. Now, in order to insert another layer of notes or another voice, uh, as it's more commonly called, we need to now change voices within Finale. Now, if you go all the way down here to the bottom of your window, you'll notice that in the lower left-hand corner next to page, we have these numbers, one, two, three, and four. Those correspond with the voices that we are using. So let's go ahead and select two. We are now going to use voice two. And you'll notice that it now allows me to put in another full measure of notes in there. So let's go ahead and now insert the stem down notes. You'll notice that we have a quarter note, three quarter notes actually. So we'll go ahead and go over here to our toolbar, select quarter note, and then let's just go ahead and insert them in as we would normally. E, D sharp, so let's select sharp, D sharp, and then let's go ahead and put E in there. Okay, we now have inserted two voices. That is how you are going to finish this piece while inserting two voices. You just need to make sure that you switch back and forth between voices one and two and that you're obviously putting in the correct uh, beats. So let's go back to voice one and let's continue on into the first measure of the six eight. Let's go ahead and change it back to an eighth note because that's what we have. And let's go ahead and just enter in the stem up notes. So we'll go B, C, B, Okay, so that's the first measure of the 6-8 bar, and you'll notice that it automatically beamed the eighth notes into groups of threes because we set it with a beat duration of dotted quarter note. All right, so now let's go in and go ahead and insert that second voice. So we go down to the bottom, select two to change to voice two, and now we need to make sure that we select the right beat duration. So let's go ahead and change our note value to a quarter note, and you'll notice that we actually need a dotted quarter note here. So we'll go down here, select the dot. We now have a dotted quarter note selected. And let's go ahead and click that G into place, G. And now the very next note you'll notice is just a regular quarter note. So we'll go ahead and deselect the dot, put that quarter note into place, and then go ahead and insert the very next note with an eighth note, and that is a D. And now we have two voices put in. Okay, so with that, why don't you go ahead and go through your piece and finish inputting all of the notes, and we will go back once we have all the notes inserted with to insert all of the dynamics and articulations. Okay, you'll notice that we actually have a new note value we need to put in. In the very first 4-4 four, four measure, we need to insert a triplet. Now we're going to do that with simple entry again, same way, and go ahead and use the tuplet tool down here in the note value section. So we'll go ahead and select the tuplet tool with our eighth note selected. So we will now be inputting eighth note triplets. So we can go ahead and just go ahead and go G, E, A, 
and then we are no longer in the tuplets mode and we're just now we now have a dotted quarter note dotted quarter note g and then an eighth note f whoops i left the dot on there you'll notice that so i'm going to go ahead and just hit backspace Okay, so you'll notice in the next measure, we have a couple of grace notes. Let's go ahead and insert those grace notes now. Those are the two 30 second notes that are small just before that half note in the first voice. So let's go ahead and select 30 second notes. And then we'll go down here to the very bottom and go ahead and select the grace note tool. This will allow us to insert grace notes. So our grace notes are D flat. So we'll select our flat tool, deselect it, and C. Now we'll go ahead and deselect our grace note tool, go back to a half note, and go ahead and in change that to F there. And so now we have our grace notes inserted. Let's go ahead and continue on finishing the piece. And for this final chord, we'll just go ahead and go C, and then just right on top of that same note, we'll go ahead and hit E, G, and then C. All right, so now I'm going to go back through and enter in all of the second voices really quick. Okay, you should now have all of the notes inputted for the score. So now, if we go ahead and if you'll notice, we have a few issues here. First issue is in the second measure of the six, eight portion of the piece, measure one, two, three, four, five. You notice that we have a rest laying on top of that final note within the measure. Now we need to hide that rest. Now the easiest way to do that, that I like to do that is just go into speedy entry tool. Make sure you have this voice two selected. Go ahead and just click in that measure, click on the rest and go ahead and hit H on your keyboard. That will now hide that rest. And if you hit escape twice, you'll notice that the rest is hidden. And when you print this out to a PDF format, you will not see the rest there. Okay, the second issue is we have no dynamics or articulations within the score. So let's go ahead and insert the dynamics first. So dynamics are also known as expressions. So we're going to find the dynamics under the expression tool, MF. So let's go ahead and select the expression tool. Our cursor has changed. Our first dynamic is forte under the very first note. So let's just go ahead and double click underneath the first note with the arrow pointing up. What brings us to our expression selection box. Let's go up to dynamics and go ahead and select F. And you notice that we have some numbers up here in the upper right hand corners of these expressions. Those are shortcut numbers. So if I were to hold down four and then click, that would have that would have inserted an F or forte into the score. So we'll go ahead and assign that. And in measure three, we have a double forte. So that should be three. And there we go. I held down three and clicked, and that inserted a double forte. Now we decrescendo, decrescendo, and then on the very last 16th note of measure five, we go to piano. So four is forte, five is mezzo forte, six is mezzo piano, seven is piano. So I'm going to go ahead and hit seven, hold it down, and then click, and that inserts piano. And then in four, four, I'm going to go ahead and insert an F on that second eighth note. So that'll be four, forte. And then the very last chord is going to pian be pianissimo. So if piano was seven, that means pianissimo would be eight. So hold down eight on your keyboard and click, and that will insert a pianissimo. Okay, so we have the basic dynamics in the score. They don't look too pretty yet, but we'll change that later. And now we need to go ahead and insert all of the hairpins. And and the expression text. So in order to do that, we are going to go ahead and go to our Smart Shape tool. Our Smart Shape tool is in this upper toolbar again, and it's the crescendo with the slur over it. 
So if we go ahead and select that, it now gives me another toolbox over here on the right. This may be different on your computer, but a new toolbox will appear. And I have a bunch of smart shapes that I can put in the score. So if I go ahead and take the crescendo tool, let's click on that. And now I can double click and drag to put, insert the crescendo to all the way to the end of measure two. So let's double click, drag to the end of measure two. We have the crescendo in the score. Now we need to insert a day crescendo. Let's go ahead and go ahead and hit day crescendo. And it starts at the beginning of six, eight and goes to all the way to the end of that measure. So let's go to there, double click, drag, and we have now dragged it into the score. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just move this down so that way it's not on top of everything. And I'm gonna, and there we go, we have some nice spacing there. Let's go ahead and insert, that looks like the final day crescendo. But since we're in this tool, let's go ahead and insert all of the slurs because this is where you will also find the slurs. You'll notice the very first object that we can choose is a slur. So let's go ahead and click on that. And now in order to input slurs, just hover over the first note that you want to slur, double click, and then drag all the way to the note that you want to end the slur on, so to the A flat. And we now have a slur. And then we'll go ahead and do that again for the next three notes, double click, drag to the D, and then let go, and it'll put a slur in. And then, fun fact, if you just have two notes that you want to slur together and you just double click the first one, it'll automatically slur two notes together. So we'll do that for these next two, just double clicking. Now we have a longer slur here that actually goes across a system break. So that goes from measure three all the way to measure five. So let's go ahead and just put that in all the way across to the very last note. And we have that slur in there. Now you notice that it goes really crazy there. No worries, we can change that. So just hover over these little uh, handles and click and drag that down and we can change the shape we can change the angle of the shape here and there. And now we have that a little bit more under control. Let's go ahead and change it that way so it doesn't collide there. There we go, we have it under control. All right, now we have two more slurs to put in there. So we gotta slur the top voice in the penultimate measure. So let's go ahead and double click there and slur those three notes together. And we need to do the same thing in the bottom voice and slur those three notes together. Okay, so those are all of our slurs. Let's now go to our articulations and insert those. Okay, articulations are gonna be right next to the, sl to the slur and crescendo tool, otherwise known as the smart shape tool. Let's go ahead and select the articulation tool. Okay, so I have my articulation tool selected. Let's go ahead and double check that we have the first voice selected down here, so I do. And you'll notice that when I hover over a note, my cursor changes from that transparent tool to the all black tool. Now, if I double click underneath the C, that brings up my articulation selection box. And you'll notice I need to put an accent on that note and it's right here. Now you notice again, we've got these letters in the upper right hand corner of these boxes. Those are our keyboard shortcuts. So if I were to hold down A on my keyboard and click the articulation tool, it would automatically insert an accent. So let's go ahead and select this accent and let's try that out on the next note. Hover underneath the note, hold down A and click, and it inserted an accent for us. Now, if we go ahead and let's now, let's see if there's a shortcut for a staccato. Let's go ahead and click, opens up, and yes, we have a shortcut for the staccato, it is S. So if we were to hold down S and then click, that would insert a staccato. So let's select it and do that for the rest of that beat. Hold down S, click, hold down S and click, and now we have some another accent, and we know that's A already, so let's hold down A and click. And then we have a tenuto. Let's see what the shortcut for that is. It is E. So we now know in the future that if you hold down E and click, that will insert a tenuto. Let's go ahead and select that, and we now have that inserted. Now, on the final measure, you'll notice that we have some more articulations to do. We first need to put a fermata in there, so let's go ahead and click and scroll down until we find the fermata which we do right here, number 26, and you'll notice that it also has an F next to it. So we'll go ahead and select that and put the fermata in there. And now there's one more articulation that needs to be put on this chord, and that is the rolling of the chord. So that is also found in the articulations tool. 
And then we just need to scroll down and it's all the way down here, number 38. So we'll go ahead and going to go ahead and select that and insert that onto the cord. For some reason, it likes to put it up here in the middle of nowhere. Let's just go ahead and click that and drag that down and place that nicely next to the note. And we now have all of our articulations in there. So let's clean up this score now. Let's go ahead and just control click all of these measures. Let's go ahead and delete them. So we're going to go down here. Right clicked is how I did that. And I'm going to go ahead and delete measure stack. Now we have our score here. Let's go ahead and clean this up some more by uh, just going over here to the staff tool. And if we click on the staff tool, it's right next to the arrow that allows me to adjust the width between the staffs. I can click on that handle, drag it down to give myself some more room. Let's go ahead and clean this up some more by clicking on the F and just moving that down a little bit. And then let's move this crescendo down a little bit. Let's go ahead and move this fortissimo over a little bit and line that up there nicely. And let's bring this piano down and line that up nicely. I'm doing all of this with just the arrow tool. That's lined up relatively nicely. Now you'll notice that we have a collision here with the forte. Let's go ahead and move that down. And let's go ahead and move the piano down just a little bit, the pianissimo down a little bit. Okay. So now that we have all of that done, let's go ahead and we have a few more expressions to put in there, which are in the, the both of the four four measures, and that is subito and diminish. So let's go ahead and go back to our expression tool. Let's double click underneath the C and let's find, ah, oh, we have a subito piano. We don't actually have a subito forte. So let's go ahead and create dynamic. And let's just create subito and then change it to music font, forte. We now have a subito forte expression within the within our project. And we'll go ahead and assign that. So we can get rid of this original F by just clicking on it and deleting. Delete. And then let's go ahead and move this over so that way it looks good. And we have subito forte. Now we will find diminish in the same dialog box. So let's go ahead and double click underneath the first beat of this penultimate measure. And let's go to expressive text. And you'll notice that under expressive text, we have its number 88, the diminuendo text. And we'll go ahead and assign that within there and drag that down just a little bit so that way it lines up nicely. And there we go. We have all of the expressions and articulations within our piece. All right, so now that we have everything put in the score that we need, we need to just fix the formatting here. You'll notice that on our example score, we have four measures in the top staff and four measures in the bottom staff. Now, in our finale project, you'll notice at least in mine, it might be in, it might be the same case in yours. I actually have one, two, three, four, five measures in the top and three in the bottom. So easy fix is just click on that last measure, go ahead and hold down control and press the down arrow. That bumps it down to this bottom system. Now in doing that, that did screw up the slur a little bit. So let's go ahead and double click on the slur and just change this shape a little bit to give it a little bit, to make it a little bit more normal. Okay, and then let's fix this one too. There we go. So that's good there. That is that first fix. And that is all formatted correctly. Okay, so now that we have the proper measure count for each line of the score, there is one final thing we need to change. And that is, if you'll notice the key signatures, you notice we are actually canceling the outgoing uh, sharps or flats. Now to change this, it's a very simple change. You just need to go in into the document menu all the way at the very bottom, document options. And you'll notice down here, we've got a whole bunch of different options that we can mess with. We are looking for the key signatures option. Under key signatures, you'll notice we have a, a lot of presets that we can change. The one that we want to, we care about is here under cancel outgoing key signature. Go ahead and select this box next to when switching between sharps and flats. So let's go ahead and check that. Hit apply and OK. And you'll notice that our score now has the proper natural signs canceling out the previous key signature.
Um, oh, and there is actually one other error. You'll notice in this first key signature change, or actually in both key signature changes, it automatically inserted a double bar line. We don't actually want that double bar line in there. We want it to just be a normal bar line. Now, in order to change this, it's very similar to how we actually got the natural signs and the key signatures in that it exists under the document options. So let's go back up to our document menu. Let's go down to document options. And we were we we were currently in key signatures where we selected the when switching between sharps and flats in order to get the naturals in there. So let's go up to the bar lines. And you'll notice under the bar lines, it has checked double bar line preceding key changes. So let's just go ahead and uncheck that, and that will get rid of those double bar lines that we don't want for this particular piece. Hit apply, hit OK, and now everything should look like what it looks like within your score. So I hope this helps. This was a walkthrough of how to create my first piece in Finale. If you have any questions, please email me and we can either set up a personal Zoom meeting or a group Zoom meeting if several of you have questions for this project. Thank you.